This is Goku Sun DBC, and welcome back for episode or video number two of my PlayStation collection. As I said before, there is quite a few, so I happen to do three videos. First one was PS1 and PS2. This time will be PSP, PS Vita, PS3. Last one will be PS4. With that said, there's a few PSP games I wasn't able to locate, but I'll mention their names anyways. That is Mortal Kombat Unchained, Mortal Kombat uh, Tekken Dark Resurrection. Also, there was Soul Calibur Broken Destiny. As well as... A few others but with that said actually I'm gonna do the rest of the PSP and then we'll get on okay first up we have soul eater battle Anyways, it's actually a relatively interesting, it's not a great overall per se, but still an interesting fighting game. Yep, there's actually quite a few cool anime theme fighting games on the PSP, but unfortunately they were released exclusively in Japan. And this is one of them. Next up we have that was released when I joined Japan, and that is, it's called Vampire Chronicle. It's basically a re-release of Vampire Hunter, also known as Night Warriors, and Vampire Savior, known as Dark Soccer's 3 here in the West. So basically, you're getting two great games, re-release version, pretty much the same, minus the online gameplay, unlike Vampire Resurrection. Still just as good, and it even has a special mode in this, which is quite a bit of content for a handheld but this is a great way to play Darkstalkers 3, honestly. If you're ever curious about playing any of the classic Darkstalker vampire games, actually, uh, seek this out. I recommend importing it. You can find import prices really aren't bad when you go through Amazon or eBay. And that's how I would recommend getting this, is to go through eBay like I did. You can find for a pretty reasonable price. It's more than worth doing just to get this great game. Next up, we have also a Japanese import. This is the original version of Final Fantasy Type-0. Of course, in America, it's called HD and released only in normal consoles. And, unlike most... I hate when this acts up. But unlike most games, to my knowledge, this is the only PSP game that was released to discs. And actually allowed online co-op mode on this, unlike, interestingly enough, the HD re-release for a console, which is strange, given consoles more powerful. Next up, we have this, Maverick Hunter, which is a completely from-the-ground-up remake of the original first... Mega Man X game, but in 3D graphics, and it actually plays pretty well, honestly, and I highly recommend getting this if you get the opportunity. Next, we have Capcom Classics Collection Remix, which actually includes the original Street Fighter game, Street Fighter 1, with many other great classics, like Strider, Final Fight, 1941, Sidearms, and many other classic Capcom games. Next we have, of course, the sequel, Final Fantasy Dissidia 012, which is a really good game, and I easily consider one of the top 10 best games on the PSP. We, technically I have the original Final Fantasy, but I didn't have the original case, but I do for Final Fantasy 2. Then you have Final Fantasy IV, the complete collection, which also includes not only Final Fantasy IV, but Final Fantasy IV, the After Years, 
which is sort of a sequel game, I guess you could say. Then you have this, which is basically a redone version of the original Final Fantasy Tactics on, of course, the original PlayStation. But with added extra stuff they decided to add in honor of the 20th anniversary at the time of Final Fantasy. Then we have something which I still have sealed, and that is Street Fighter Alpha 3 Max, which is considered by many to be the best version of Street Fighter Alpha 3, with a special extra character exclusive only to this version. And last we have Lord... Yeah, this is basically sort of an interesting type game. It's kind of, uh, I guess you could say it's sort of like a take on Monster Hunter by Square. Combined with other elements. Next, we have, without cases, um, Street Fighter Cross Tekken. Enchanted Arms, which is an interesting tactical RPG. Soul Calibur 4. Uncharted 2. Uncharted 3. This, of course. The Street Fighter. 30, uh, 25th Anniversary Collection, which includes a physical version of Street Fighter Cross Tekken, uh, also Street Fighter 4 Arcade, I mean Super Street Fighter 4 Arcade Edition. Let's do a copy of uh, the HD remix of Street Fighter 2, as well as includes a digital copy of Street Fighter 3 Third Strike Online Edition. Next up. Some other imports. We have, this is known as Infinite Battle, it's basically a robot 3-on-3v3 three 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 robot fighting game of sorts, arena-style, kind of like, I guess you could say Armored Core, but it also has certain elements that remind you a little bit of Gundam as well. It's actually a really fun game. Next, we have, of course, Vampire Resurrection, which is Darkstalker's Resurrection, just the original in Japanese. And this includes versions of all three games in one on HD with online gameplay, though I don't think this will actually work in America with the Japanese network. Next we have an interesting crossover game with many characters from many different series, animes and video games alike. Then we have my actually only Blaze Blue game that I have actually in my collection. Since I've never been the biggest Blaze Blue person. Then we have one of the last games come out from the uh, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure series, which is the uh, All Star Battle, which is actually rather interesting to say the least. Then we have this, the Journey. Collector's Edition, which also includes, of course, the other two games from the Makers of Journey, all three games in one. And honestly, I love Journey. It's one of my personal favorite indie games. Then we have Star Wars Lego, The Complete Saga. Minecraft, of course. Kingdom Hearts 1.5 Kingdom Hearts 2.5 Ashura's Wrath Batman Arkham Asylum 
Batman Arkham Origins, which is highly underrated game. Final Fantasy X and X2 HD. Next up we have Final Fantasy 13, Final Fantasy 13 2, and Lightning Returns Final Fantasy 13. So the entire Final Fantasy 13 trilogy. It's only right to have all of them, and you can get all three games under $10 a piece. So you can get pretty cheap. Then we have, of course, Final Fantasy XIV, A Realm Reborn, the original. And then the expansion version, and I believe this was the only expansion add to PS3. Of course, Heaven's Sword, which is definitely pretty cool. Then we have the HD collection of Ico with Shadows of the Colossus. And by the way, if you've never actually had a chance to play Ico, I recommend you check it out. It's a really fun platformer slash puzzle game and artistically much like Shows of the Colossus, it's a very beautiful game to look at. And it's no surprise. Next we have, of course, Injustice Gods Among Us. And yes, the very much dreaded and despised Mortal Kombat vs. DC Universe. Street Fighter 4. Super Street Fighter 4 Arcade Edition. Ultra Street Fighter 4. Tekken Hybrid, which includes a demo, of course, Tekken Tag 2, and it also includes the movie Tekken Blood Vengeance, which is actually kind of a cool movie. I recommend check out Blood Vengeance if you're a fan of the Tekken games. Of course, Tekken Tag Tournament 2. And a really cool anime fighter, which I've done some gameplay in the past of, uh, from the PS4 version, which is improved with extra characters and DLC added to it from this version. Now, you can get this pretty actually cheap. I found it at GameStop, I think, for some like 6 or $7. So, yeah, it's actually very cheap. If you're into anime fires, which of course, as I've said, for the most part, I'm not the biggest anime fighting game fan, but I surprisingly actually really like this game, which actually surprised me quite a bit. And the net coding is actually not bad either. Okay, next up we have... In my opinion, one of the most overly hated and why I do not get of the Assassin's Creed series for me personally, Assassin's Creed 3, this may sound blasphemous, but for me personally, Assassin's Creed 3 is my number one favorite Assassin's Creed game of all time. And I know most people feel it's Assassin's Creed 2, or Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag. And I get where they come from with Black Flag. The naval battles are fun, but guess what? This was the game that introduced the concept of the naval battles. Yeah, Black Flag took it a lot farther, but this game was really what introduced it. And I love the fact the setting of this game taking place during the American Revolutionary War, which I thought was a really cool setting. That's one of my favorite time periods in American history. Because, fun fact, outside of YouTube and things, my favorite subject is actually history. Well, and theology. Next up is, I think, maybe the most underrated in the Assassin's Creed series, and that is Assassin's Creed Rogue. 
which if you're wanting a physical copy of the remastered, you're going to have to unfortunately order that from the UK if you want a physical copy on PS4. But, or you can just pick this up or get the trilogy pack, which includes uh, Assassin's Creed 3 and Assassin's Creed 3 Liberation. Oh wait, no, that doesn't include Rogue. Why am I saying that includes Black Flag with it? It should include Rogue, in my personal opinion. But, you yeah, know, this is actually a really fun game, and the naval stuff is cool. And given it starts on Ireland, that makes it even cooler, because... Oh, part of my family's of Irish background, so I think that's pretty awesome. Next we have, uh, Borderlands the Pre-Sequel. Which... I haven't played yet, so I can't really judge, but quite a few people actually seem to really like this game. Next, we have the Collector's Edition of Beyond Two Souls, which is more of an episodic-type game. I guess you could say it's very similar to your games like Until Dawn and games like that, or Life is Strange. Uh, next, we have the original... Dead or Life 5, Dead Space 3, Demon Souls, which of course started the entire Soulsborne franchise, Diablo 3, Reaper of Souls, Dishonored, Fallout New Vegas, Far Cry 3, Killzone Trilogy, next we have Metal Gear Rising, which is actually a really interesting game, and it's fun if you like tons of just action and stuff, rather than but you don't mind trying some different than normal Metal Gear Solid games, I recommend checking out Metal Gear Rising. It's actually quite a bit of fun. Next, of course, we have the first of the rebooted Mortal Kombat games. Remember Me, which is a highly underrated third-person action game. Shadow of Mordor, The Darkness 2, The Last of Us, Thief, Zone of the Enders HD Collection, known as the Vanilla Version. Marvel vs. Capcom 3 The Fate of Two Worlds I love that cover. The Collector's Edition of Soul Calibur 5 Next up, the Vita games. First I'll do the two Collector's Editions and then the regular games. This game, which is a pretty cool hack and slash type game, it plays very much like, I guess you would expect something more like Samurai Warriors or Dynasty Warriors type gameplay, except there's lots and lots of fan service. And if you don't know what fan service is, well, I wouldn't know how to put it any other way. I do wish it didn't rely so much on the fan service, because the art style is actually really cool, and the game mechanics are actually very solid. It's just unfortunate that a, I feel, a pretty solid hack and slash type game gets overshadowed by the fan service, unfortunately. And, like, the last of the Fate games that has come out, which, by the way, you can find this on sale like I did at GameStop. I found this, like, normally, I think when it came out, it was like $80. Well, 
Believe it or not, I actually found this on clearance at GameStop for less than half the price of it, and I still got it brand new for that. So, you might want to check out your local GameStops if you're a PS Vita collector, and check with the store managers and see what they have, because they keep most of that stuff not on the shelf behind the counter. So, I recommend, if you know a manager at one, like I do, I knew the store manager one, the ones near where I live, Luckily, he gives me heads up since he knows, and basically I'm about the only Vita collector that does business for his store. And here's the last group of games. Um, rest of Vita stuff in my collection. Now, unfortunately, there is a game I do have for Vita that I actually don't have the case for. And that is Uncharted Golden Abyss. Now, the rest of them, Lego... The Lord of the Rings. Of course, a game I praise nonstop. Gravity Rush. Final Fantasy World. Or World of Final Fantasy, however you want to say it. Final Fantasy X and X2 HD. Though technically X2 is digital. Then we have kind of a cool game a lot of people call a ripoff of obviously Super Smash Bros but it actually plays very differently than Super Smash Brothers and I actually really like the stage designs and different elements in the game I think that really does set PlayStation All-Stars apart from Super Smash it's unfortunate they just call it like a knockoff because it actually plays quite a bit differently in all honesty Next, we have another, of course, copy of Street Fighter Cross Tekken. So, needless to say, as you can tell by now, I'm a big fan of this game. In my opinion, one of the most underrated fine games of last gen. Next, we have a really cool anime game. If you like the Sword Art Online anime series and the manga, which actually I love, believe it or not, surprisingly, I've, so far, I've really enjoyed this game, which has got me interested to try other Sword Art Online actual games out. But, I love the manga. It's one of the few manga series I actually try to keep up with, honestly. Even there's like four or five different series I know of right now that I go to Books a Million for. But, I actually really love the series. And, I've really enjoyed the anime as well. Next, we have a game that plays quite a bit like, some people would say Monster Hunter, but I think it plays, reminds me a little bit more of another game called God Eater. And that's the best way I know how to put this game, honestly. Elements of it reminds me more of God Eater, but the only Monster Hunter game I've played was on the 3DS, so I haven't played Monster Hunter World yet, which I know I need to. Next, we have Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3, which by quite a few people consider this to be the best of the franchise. I get where they're coming from, and trust me, I love 3. But I have become very biased and a big uber fan of Infinite. Next, we have another of Assassin's Creed games that gets overshadowed. Even though this was the first Assassin's Creed game that actually had, where the main character was a uh, female, which I thought was actually pretty cool. And it gave it a refreshing feel from certain elements, and given she could play differently in three versions of herself. One in Assassin, one in a lady's dress, and the other like a slave. It should allow her different special things she could do better in certain forms. And with that said, though, the game is actually a lot of fun, and I think it plays very solidly on, is there certain glitch issues here and there in the game? Yeah, like many Assassin's Creed games, but play solid, and it's a great Assassin's Creed game, honestly, if you want to play on the go. I highly recommend Liberation, if you ever get the chance to play it. Next, we have Borderlands 2, which is definitely highly praised by many people. Dead or Alive 5 Plus, which is just a portable version, but you can, of course, do uh, remote play as well with your PS4. 
which actually I say is quite a bit of fun when you really get a chance to try a remote layout with the Vita. It makes it worth playing, I feel. Next we have, hands down, the, in my opinion, best first-person shooter ever made on a handheld, and that is Killzone Mercenary. For me personally, at least so far, I've been playing a little bit of each of the Killzone games, except for Shadowfall, to really try get feel, and honestly, out of the four games, I've tried the trilogy in this. I like this more than the tr any of the three on the PS3. I'm surprised, honestly. I did not expect to like a first-person shooter on handheld as much as I do. But to me, this is the definitive first-person shooter experience on a handheld. Next, we have the handheld version of, of course, Mortal Kombat. Which is actually a lot of fun, and given you can do the swipe, like, motions and stuff for fatalities on the touch screen, which is actually kind of cool, in all honesty. Then we have a pretty hard tactical RPG, and that is Nocturnal Doctrine. And, I mean, Natural Doctrine, whatever. But, it's, and when I say it's hard, I mean, I'm talking like... Uh, Dark Souls level hard, even though it's a tactical RPG, more like Final Fantasy. So it's basically, if Final Fantasy had a baby with Dark Souls, that's the best way to put it in all honesty. But anyways, and that's it. And I'll get ready to see you all next time. Same YouTube time, same YouTube channel. For part... Five. I mean, part three of this three issue of PlayStation. So, see you next time. I hope you enjoyed the music in the background from Tekken 5. See you next time.